Hello everybody, it's Nicholas Lion Rider here, and today I am proud to present a brand new, overly ambitious series for my channel, and that is Mystic Aquarium! So, if you guys have seen my previous series, uh, Roger Williams Park Zoo, uh, that will still continue. Um, I know that's still not complete, um, but I thought I would kind of get a jump start on a brand new series for the channel. Um, for a few reasons, most notably, uh, Roger Williams needs to take a pause due to some, you know, issues that are with uh, the current mod, specifically the camel. Um, so I will still be periodically putting out episodes for that, but I wanted to just kind of get a jump start on a new project. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using the same method I did for Roger Williams. I'm using on top replica to basically uh, map out uh, the entire map of the zoo using uh, a Google Earth uh, top-down perspective of the entire layout. But uh, I think the big, uh, you know, elephant in the room that I should address is it's an aquarium in a in a zoo game, and that's un yeah, I mean I mean not unheard of, but for Planet Zoo it's unheard of. Uh, I know that a lot of people have done individual, like, you know, what if sea lion habitats or a penguin habitat, but no one has ever tried to make a functional aquarium <laughs> inside a planet zoo, and that is exactly what I'm going to try and do here. So, um, I guess the big thing is, you know, but Nick, how are you ever going to manage this? There are no fishes in the game. There are no whales in the game, or sea lions, or otters, or anything. Well, uh, well, in the case of otters, Mystic doesn't have otters, so I don't have to worry about that. But um, in the case of everything else, how am I going to do that? Now, if you guys have seen my Roger Williams series, you might know that uh, I did get harbor seals working inside of the game. And um, the big thing was, I got them working, and they could swim around, but they couldn't dive. And so... My next big challenge that I had as a modder was like, okay, I've gotten them, you know, working in the game, but like, I want to see what I can do here. Um, can I actually get diving working? And so I, you know, set a challenge for myself and I was like, listen, I was the first person to get a Triceratops in Planet Zoo. I was the first person to get Eagles in Planet Zoo. I was the first person to get Seals in Planet Zoo. I can get whales in this game, and spoiler alert, I got whales into this game. So um, basically, uh, I let, before I get into that, because we're going to be talking about diving a lot later, uh, I do want to address um, the kind of introduction to the series by like actually talking about what I'm building. So currently, I am building the uh, the main uh, entrance to Mystic. It's uh, a really big, kind of intricate building. Uh, it's got some really funky architecture, but I, I feel like that's common in a lot of aquariums. But Mystic has a very distinctive, like, kind of, um, I don't know how you would call it. Like, it's almost like a, a glass dome that, like, shoots out. It's very modern. Um, and so basically the entire thing is, like, in a giant glass cage. And it's just this, uh, it just got these, like, kind of, like, crazy metal spires shooting out from the top surrounding the glass. And um, there's an interior glass bit that like kind of does the opposite, it caves inward. And you can see me kind of working on that right now. I'm doing like kind of the, um, the little detail work and stuff in it. There's like some uh, interesting like just patterns and stuff. And I will say this was actually a big pain. It was, I'll be honest, this building might have been a bigger pain than the uh, actual whales. <laughs> Um, cause it, even though it is a circle and that's a plus, uh, because I'm able to use, uh, the techniques I've used, uh, in one of my, like, Atlas Park, I used, um, this kind of, like, uh, s circle pattern design, um, quite a bit, but, um, it was really difficult, like, I, you know, it was really difficult, actually, before I did all of this, I actually made the entire thing beforehand, um, just on a smaller scale. Just because, uh, at first I just got the proportions wrong, but, um, now I, you know, I, I read, uh, set some, you know, markers down on the ground so that everything is lined up perfectly. But, um, and I still think, uh, this, uh, building could use a, a second pass, and I think I might, depending. Because, uh, as you can see here with the glass and stuff, not everything lines up super perfectly. Um, this was actually, I think, the first attempt I did. 
I thought I was going to basically just do one um, pattern and then copy it around to all the other spires. Then I gave up because uh, I was I knew that wasn't going to work out. So then my second thing was I'll just uh, accurately follow the curve of the spire uh, for like one strip, and then from there I'll just be able to circle it around. And this worked out pretty well. Um, I I think it worked out about as well as you know one could uh, hope for. Um, it's uh it's it doesn't line up super perfectly, but and there's some overlapping and stuff, and so it's not the prettiest looking thing. But uh, overall, I got the shape down uh, correctly. Uh, and then I did a similar method for the inner uh, spire. I basically just copied that around, spun it around, and then there I had the inner glass. Um, so as you can see, not everything lined up super perfectly, um, but I did eventually, you know, um, fix it up. So the next step was just kind of uh, the aquarium has like a bunch of like little posters like hanging around the, this uh, center pavilion uh, with a bunch of different, um, you know, banners and stuff. And like I said, I'll go back and because uh, this front entrance uh, deserves a lot more uh, attention because it is rather intricate uh, in the center of this is actually kind of like the um, I don't know what the projection is but it's a, a world map projection the, uh, it's basically the UN logo uh, where it's based on the North Pole and then uh, looking down at all the um, continents and stuff from that perspective um, and then obviously I didn't put as much detail um, into the pavilion as I wanted to and I will get around to that in a future episode but uh, right now, I just wanted to get the basics done, which was basically adding the poles, adding the uh, the banners, and adding uh, a handful of the uh, little information kiosks and stuff. So you can see me right now, I'm doing a basic information kiosk. And then I also do, a, they have a little uh, photo op section, uh, which is like a green screen that you can like go inside the aquarium and then, um, you know, it'll like place your uh, family in front of whatever like either the belugas or the sharks whatever uh and so that's just off to the side um but for now that's really all i wanted to really focus on again in the future i'm gonna probably touch it up again but now we can actually get to uh what is the fun part of the episode which is the whale enclosure so um before i get started i want to say that this might not be 100 percent accurate like roger williams was the issue is, um, unlike Roger Williams that has excellent online documentation of the entire zoo, I have uh, the Google Maps reference and uh, going even further, I'm a zoo member at Roger Williams. Um, and so I was able to frequently uh, you know, visit the zoo and uh, get reference photos myself. Now I wasn't able to do the same thing with Mystic due to coronavirus. And uh, while I could go, and I think I will go eventually, um, I was limited in that regard where I didn't have my own reference photos and unfortunately they don't have a good, um, what's it called? Uh, basically like Google map, uh, layout section and stuff. So I basically had to get all of my reference from memory as well as, uh, select, uh, stock image photos that I could find online. Uh, so basically you see me right now, I'm basically, uh, mapping out what uh the beluga layout is and you might have seen like that little archway and stuff it's uh or a uh, pathway i did that was like an outcrop i eventually get rid of that because at first i thought there was an outcrop there um and i think there still might be because i think i remember it it's just i don't think that's at the right location so i eventually took it out in favor of just the simple path for now um and then past that, I'm basically just doing uh, the basic tank layouts and stuff, um, just where um, the pools would be, you know, higher or lower. And then uh, now I kind of start on what the actual tanks are. So um, I guess the big thing is uh, designing aquariums is a lot weirder than designing zoos. Um, so when it comes to Planet Zoo, uh, most people just have to worry about like the habitat or whatever above ground. Aquariums are weird though because you have to worry about what's above ground but also underwater. So you know 90% of the entire exhibits are going to be underwater and so I had to do all of the kind of rock work and stuff that I would normally do above ground 
also underwater. So in this giant canyon, I had to do like crazy rock work. Um, and I wanted to also kind of mimic the, um, the texture of uh, aquatic rock work. So uh, as many people know, rocks underwater will kind of deteriorate over time. And so while many of you know me as like the kind of guy that uh, I like my, my cliff faces, if they're fake, to be uh, flat, because um, I know a lot of people like to just dot around these big rocks or whatever as like clumps of, uh, you know, like, uh, it, it makes it look like it's a bunch of like Play-Doh pieces that you just clump together and it makes it look uh, like there's a bunch of, you know, circular rocks just placed around instead of like a flat rock wall. And um, so normally I don't want to look go for that look if I was doing stuff like a polar bear exhibit or a um, cheetah exhibit or something. But for the belugas, I actually did want that kind of like uh, yeah, monkey bread type <laughs> like look to the uh, cliffside because underwater rocks do get that kind of like uh, deteriorated, clumpy look to them. And so I basically just kind of used that as a reference and just made it as rough as possible. And so you see like those kind of, uh, you know, cliff tears to it. Um, but then on the land, you can see me, I basically tried to make it so that the, the land was still very, the rocks above ground were flat. So you can see me here. So the, the, they have a tundra wall, or, um, in the back of the beluga exhibit that bleeds into what is the, uh, uh, indoor facilities area for some of the keepers. And it's also where you can do the key, uh, penguin meet, uh, meet and greet. And so I wanted to like kind of uh, show the difference between that. It doesn't mean that they wanted to be super fake. I did kind of use some rocks to uh, kind of mesh it with the uh, underwater rocks. But you can see me uh, doing a lot more of the bumpiness underwater than I did above ground. And unfortunately, that's like 90% of this episode. Um, it's like how the, you know, <laughs> it's just how, how the exhibit is. It's just a lot of rock work. Um, since the belugas obviously aren't that, you know, they're, they're a big animal, but when it comes down to it, you know, underwater life doesn't need much besides rocks and a little bit of, um, you know, minor foliage, like, I guess you could say underwater, it's like kelp or something, or like seagrass and stuff, but, you know, nothing, uh, to the level of like a, a normal zoo, um, which was interesting, because again, this is a little different for me. So right now what I'm doing is I'm working on the uh, well, the main viewing area of the belugas, which is the underwater viewing. So there are a few steps uh, that come down, and so I wanted to do uh, make those using, um, I think I used the limestone pieces. I think it's a little too white for me, so uh, I think I will uh, probably change those off, uh, off screen. Um, and uh, past that, um, I'm also doing this kind of technique where I mesh the, uh, the terrain into the rocks uh, and add grass so that it gets this kind of like grassy, mossy looking uh, top bit of the rocks, which helps like create the kind of like coastal look that I'm looking for. Um, so like I said, I'm going to have to use a lot of the, uh, I'm going to have to take a lot of creative liberties and uh, be creative with the pieces in the game because we don't have something like an actual aquatic expansion that could add st stuff like a coastal theme with coastal rocks and stuff. Um, so you can see me here, I'm basically uh, using that technique of like the long grass with the uh, rocks. And then in a minute you see me use, I believe it's the corkscrew trees. Um, and I use those as kind of a uh, basis for the, um, the foliage. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so this is the kind of look I wanted for the tops of the, uh, the rocks, because um, it matches what they look like in real life, which is this kind of like rough, bushy texture on top of the cliffs. Uh, there are a few trees, but for the most part, it's just covered in this like thick layer of mossy uh, grass. Um, and so you just see me placing those like crazy. Um, right now I'm making, there's a small little dam uh, separating the wetlands from the uh, beluga enclosure, so I quickly made those. And then past that, uh, I, I'm just doing a little bit more of the detailing around the, um, 
uh, underwater viewing area, which is just more rock work, uh, nothing crazy, and then I use more of those corkscrew trees to uh, kind of line the tips of the uh, rocks. Um, so I guess now we can kind of start uh, discussing how it is I actually did the uh, diving for the belugas. So um, it's pretty simple really. Um, in order to get diving belugas you need uh, two mods that I'll have available. Um, I don't know when this video will be uh, released but soon after it's released I will have both mods available and that is the beluga mod obviously which will replace the pygmy hippo but the second mod are invisible platforms so in order for this to work you need a a hippopotamus and b invisible platforms so you'll see me in a minute once i'm finished with these cliffs uh the way the hippo works in the game um basically the hippo will walk on the bottom of a surface underwater so it will go underwater but then walk on whatever surface so my theory and this turned out to be true was if I made that surface out of rocks or any buildable piece and then made that buildable piece invisible hypothetically it would look like the hippo in this case would be floating or, or uh, diving it would look like it's just walking uh, diagonally and vertically underwater. Now, if you take it a, a step further and then replace that hippo, cut off its legs and turn it into a whale, well, now you have uh, a aquatic animal. Oh, I do want to comment on this. I added uh, custom barnacles to the sides of the cliffs. Uh, just to add a little more detail because the actual uh, aquarium has those little barnacles. Um, but back to uh, my, uh, my theory because uh, you, you see it in a minute you see me messing with the, the water levels a ton just because I'm trying to get that uh, all squared away before I uh, release the uh, things but here I go so I start placing um, what is essentially a, a, a ver vertical jungle gym where I want the nav mesh of the belugas to move so you see me I'm placing some diagonal platforms at different lay uh, layers uh, I'm adding different heights and stuff in like large quantities and I'm just covering the entire habitat in all of these like crazy uh, convoluted patterns. So the theory, and this works out in the end, is that the belugas are going to be moving in all sorts of directions. So up and down on different levels, they can walk on the bottom of the, or uh, swim close to the bottom of the uh, ocean or of the tank and close to the top and so i'm checking right now to make sure that my nav mesh uh works before i turn them invisible and it does work so the uh the beluga hippos <laughs> are able to uh move you know freely uh throughout this entire tank they're able to uh you know move diagonally and stuff and then you see at the end of the video which should be coming up soon uh when i make them invisible it just looks like they're floating uh and swimming diagonally and stuff and I obviously the uh, animation of the belugas isn't 100% ideal uh, because I can't do custom animations. But I basically weighted the tail of the whale to the uh, the back of the um, clavicle uh, of the leg muscle of the hippo, and there we go. You can see them kind of moving around. And so um, again, it's not perfect, but I got diving working in the game, guys. That's a big deal. Um, it's a little glitchy, they look like they're spasming a little bit, but they are moving freely underwater, and that is kind of a big deal for Planet Zoo, since no other creature can actually do this. Um, so, if you guys stay tuned, uh, in future episodes I'll probably be doing uh, more of this kind of craziness, and uh, I hope you guys like the new series. I'm really excited for it, and uh, thanks for watching, guys.